Hey, it's Chris, Legion Games. Sometimes uh, the pause button and the record button are just too close together. Okay, so I got Marvel United. I got it. I love it. I'm waiting for the upcoming Marvel United X-Men standalone expansion sequel compatibility, everything smushed together. There's a couple of videos of playthrough gameplay that was out there already at the time. And now we're going to try take two of my unboxing in case you're looking to see what it actually looks like and some thoughts and some impressions on what you're actually getting. So let's take a look at this a second. So this is the core game and the stretch goal box. You can already see the difference between the stretch goal and the core box in size. So the stretch goal box here has 44 miniatures, 11 bad guys, and 33 extra heroes. The core game itself comes with three bad guys, and seven heroes. So just the replayability there is insane. Now, what else did you get along with it in terms of the collector's pledge? This whole mother load, right? <laughs> and, and you can't actually adequately see this, so here. Yeah. Six others. Now, I'll tell you right now that just holding these six right here, this feels about as heavy as the other two boxes. And so I can already tell, without having even looked in these boxes yet, that there is going to be storage issues. And yes, all of these boxes nicely line up and are nice sized, and they have nice little illustrations on the side so you can have a little panorama on your shelf. But I mean, storage is becoming a real issue. Like I don't need these whoppers of a box for this much game. And I can already tell it's gonna be an issue. And, and just like with Street Fighters the Miniature, when I unbox that, like storage is gonna be a real pain in the butt for that. Storage is gonna be kind of a pain in the butt for this because, you know, just the core game seems to be the one that's best. And this is not like a super in-depth like game. Like I've said before elsewhere, this is a, a 10 page rule book of relatively straight overhead things that you can play with your kids or your family. So this is not like, super complex strategy heavy euro four out of five on the board game geek scale you got your nice cardboard tokens here nothing fancy and they've just got all nice plastic inserts and the one thing i really like about this is you see these little side tabs right here and these allow you to grab it and pull it up really easily off of the rest of the materials so i really like that now Let's talk about the actual storage here. And just feeling these already, these are the location cards you can kind of see in the core game here. And you just get a bunch of them. And this is the core, so you got a little bit of everything. Times Square, Shield Helicopter, Shield Helicopter, Central Park. So just, you know, your basic Marvel uh, Avengers first movie scenery, if you will. I can already tell, though, I kind of almost regret not buying the cardboard locations, because these are fine. But they're also not, like, really good, and I can see them getting bent pretty easily. Especially with kids. And then, in all these boxes, you've got the villain stuff. So you've got the villain dashboard, which is just a quick summary of sort of what they do. And then you've got the three villain cards, so you just get to see all three of them. Ultron, Red Skull, Taskmaster. But the better thing is the other side. So this is what makes them all unique. They all have different abilities. They all have different actions of what they're going to be doing and how they're going to react and how they scale to the number of players you're playing with. So here is the actual insert. And you can see a little bit that these are a little bit recessed, but at the same time, if I tip this too far, they're all going to fall out. And the miniatures, for the most part, are relatively good quality, from what I can tell. Some of these aren't as detailed as I may like. But here's the bottom, too, that you can see. And already, there's this huge gap right here. Now, these are big card decks. Let me be clear about this. This is well hefty, good cards, hero cards, and then villain cards. But again, look at this. What's, what's going underneath here? There's no dice. There's no smaller cards. There's, there's no reason. I don't, I, I don't get it. So here, I'll show you just a couple of ones. You know, Hulk, probably not as good as I may like. It's fine. 
Some of the detail on a few of these other ones are a little bit better. The Iron Man, for example, has a really interesting, uh, cool base as well. I really like that one, actually. And Taskmaster's kind of, kind of an interesting pose. It's kind of got the Naruto Ninja pose going on here. With his arms held up behind him. Yeah, that makes sense. Have my shield behind me and my sword behind me instead of in front. Where they can be useful. Anyway. So they're, they're all pretty good. I mean, these are solid miniatures. Now, they're also not on the order of the Street Fighter ones either. I mean, they're just smaller, right? No big deal. So that's the base game. This is the, the essentially the copy that you could pick up uh, from your Walmart or your Target, I believe. So so I think the, the difference being with this one is that the Walmart or the Target had one of the exclusives with it. So it just added something else that people weren't terribly happy about afterwards. And I think it was a retail deal. But, you know, here is the stretch goal box. So this thing, this thing easily is twice as heavy and twice the size. And I, I literally like the artwork on, on the box. Like if I could get my miniatures to look anything near that, that would be great. So. Now, this is interesting what they've done here. Now, we've got just the miniatures that are taking up about half, it looks like. Half of the box. I'll open those in a second. And then you've got the other half, which is just having all of your other accoutrements, like I said. Some more, you know, tokens. And then all of your various villain cards. All 11 of these villain cards that you can kind of see and take a look through. And so, just a little bit of everything there. Again, I mean, you could have very easily gotten just these two and been very, very happy. Just because of the amount of variability and uh, just everything under the sun. So I would have been very happy just with this, but I think the complexity and the difficulty, I think, was the concern initially, too. And without some of the expansions that are adding different modes, I think that may have been more of the issue. So again, just these uh, massive sets of cards. You can just kind of see here, there are six of these cards. So you got some of the villains here with a little bit of venom on the back. And again, I love the artwork. The artwork on these is tremendous. Baron Zemo. Hella. And then they've got their challenges on the other side. And then you've got a little bit of a mix here. It looks like with the heroes on the other side of Baron Zemo with Spider-Man 2099. And then you've got these three. Yeah, actually, you know, look, if you look at these, they're actually hero decks on the other side are actually slightly larger. So this is the hero right here. I wouldn't even know who she was, American Chavez, except for the fact that I played Marvel Puzzle Quest. So she is in there. And then you got a little Ghost Rider on the other side. Miss Marvel. Hawkeye. So again, a little bit of everything. And then you've got Nebula. And She-Hulk. So again, these are just massive decks of cards to account for all of the 44 heroes and villains in this set so that's that's a lot and this 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 insert on this one you know it's it's nothing it's nothing fancy it's just slots for the cards and the other cards so i wonder how much other stuff you could fit in here if you just put all of the card stuff in here and put the miniatures elsewhere because this other miniature box i mean you could self-contain this by itself you don't need to have this in anything else and it would be just fine and they've done two rows of miniatures. Or two levels, I guess you should say. So like I was saying, two sort of columns here, you can see. Two layers. And again, they just went straight up. Here you go. You can get a little bit of a... I mean, they're, again, they're not super deep. They're not super stuck in there like the Street Fighters were. But you can get at least a little bit of a closer look here. Vision right there. 
falling out all the time. Squirrel Girl, Doctor Strange, Wanda, Quicksilver. My hand in the way. And that's that's what I'm talking about, though, is that these fall out really easily, so storage has to be a little bit careful here. And I actually think the detail is a little bit better on some of these. Falcon, War Machine, Fury. A little bit of everybody. Some of these villains are really nice. Modok, really detailed there. Hella, again, pretty cool. Rhino right there under my finger. Some of these are, these are much better. I like these. And you got a lot from the MCU. They went with movies that are mainstream now, and they also went kind of away from that. So. Now, this is interesting, and I don't remember because I don't honestly pay attention to sometimes the updates apart from, you know, when do I need to fill out the pledge manager and when do I expect it to be shipped and is my shipping paid? Uh, so, you know, you got your Daredevil, you got your Electra, all the people that you're expecting, Punisher down there, a little bit of Venom, Spider-2099. I'll be honest, I don't remember all of these. I won't try and make a fool of myself. Because apparently not knowing them is worse than misnaming them, as I've learned. Blade there. So just some cool guys. Now this is the interesting thing. is Are these two down here the ones that were exclusive that we're supposed to get, I think, in compensation or not? I honestly don't remember even at this point. And do I really need two more? Probably not. But all in all, these are pretty good. I think... I don't know, maybe it's just the red from the villains, but maybe it's the model as well. I think some of the villains just seem nicer in terms of detail, I mean. Now then, we also have these two that came without expansions, and I wouldn't think that these are the two that are supposed to go in there because I don't think they really fit, but you have Yondu and you have Adam Warlock. And these were the ones that were only available at the higher pledge levels. Like, they just, like, lock them behind those pledge levels. If you didn't get those pledge levels, you just couldn't add them on either. So, Yondu. These are these are very nice, actually. And he's got his own little card deck here, too. I promise no boxes were hurt in the making of this video, by the way. And then Adam Warlock. Again, this is this is a pretty cool sculpt. Better than some of those other ones than I saw in the expansions in the core box or in the stretch goal box. And again, obviously, his cards. Nothing fancy. Adam Warlock has always been one of those highly underrated characters. Not many people from mainstream know about him. I... Th wonder if he's going to come out in the upcoming movies and sort of play a bigger role. I've always been a fan of him and Silver Surfer kind of doing their thing in the background during the Infinity War. But alas, we didn't really get that. At least yet. Maybe Infinity Stones, something along those lines. Anyway. So now comes the huge massive pile. Since we're talking the Infinity stuff right now, I'm just going to leave the camera down so I don't have to adjust it like six times. And this expansion actually has a couple pages to it. I think most of the others from what I've seen only are like one page. But this has the Infinity Battles, the special rules, everything you need to know for that side of things. As well as Thanos cards and Thanos events. not And Thanos locations apart from just the usual locations and you can see what i mean here in a second so here are your usual locations but you can kind of see nita villiers haha <laughs> look at that anyway a little recognized there sanctum satorum asgard vormir new york now see you can see that they changed up here it's gold see now they're gold on the back and they say infinity gauntlet thanos locations whereas the other ones are just marvel united infinity gauntlet so you can see the difference already and again, just a variety of host of stuff that you're going to recognize. 
And the artwork on all of these is really good. But again, I think I would probably get the cardboard locations just for an added bonus. And you have all of your bad guys here too. Now, uh, there's a separate villain dashboard. Again, you've got the gold background here. It must be having something to do with the Thanos side of things because the other side is silver. This has, again, a good amount of four extra bad guys. Thanos, Black Dwarf, Proxima Midnight, and Ebony Maw. Again, very classic from the comics. And they all have, again, on the other side, as you can see, that. Now, the interesting thing here, this Infinity Gauntlet that was so hyped, this is not as impressive in person. It looks really nice from this side of things. Like, nice and shiny and gold, but it's kind of a lot more lightweight than I was expecting. And I'm sure these gems slot on here pretty decently. But again, could you have made the indentations maybe a little bit deeper right here so that you don't have to worry about them falling out because... I mean, the gems are flat-sided, so they're going to slot in there nicely, but that yellow one is the only large one. All of these are, you know, quite a bit smaller, and I'll show you just a size comparison here. Just sort of the size difference right here between the two gems. Yellow being the larger, and then all of the rest, the other four, five, actually, being smaller in that sense. So, there you go. And I don't know what this is. This is in the insert. It's just like a plastic card holder. So maybe a discard tray. But um, this is all the villain deck. Again, a nice large deck. But then there's just this nice empty, big empty spot right here in the center. Like this covers most of it. But at the same time, there's still plenty of space underneath. And again, here are your four miniatures. I'll just pull them out for you this time. Again, these are, these are, these are very nice. I don't know if it's the red plastic again. Or it's the the detail. I feel like it's just better on the villains. So which it is, I don't really know. This is really nice. Proxima Midnight as well. Kind of hard to see on her. Uh, Yeah, these these just all seem a little bit better. The basing, the detail, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just me. I mean, maybe it's just my own inherent bias. But we're going to go right along next to that one. I mean, if we're going to talk the Infinity Gauntlet, then we might as well stay in space. Guardians of the Galaxy here. And this is just the one page sort of, it tells you about the different challenges. So I'm assuming all of these are going to be very similar. So this is the plan B challenge that you can take and adapt and put in with the, any of the other stuff. And this insert, again, is really the same thing. This insert is really the same thing when it comes down to it here. You have just your location cards. Now I don't recognize all those locations. And then one villain, Ronin. I cannot get this to focus on Ronin, but Ronin the Destroyer, for the life of me. And then you have the four Guardians of the Galaxy that aren't in the box. You have Star-Lord, Rocket, Groot, and Gamora. Because Drax, I believe, is a stretch goal in the other stretch goal box. And this is just not focusing now for some reason. Just do it this way. There we go. So you can see all four of the Guardians there. And then you can see Ronan the Destroyer. I don't know, it just wasn't focusing with me taking him out, so I thought this would be easier. Again, deck of cards, Ronan the Destroyer's card. Again, like, look at all this empty space here, right? 
What's going here? What's going here? Nothing. I wish that the boxes were all different sized almost to accommodate what's in here rather than one uniform size that fits nicer on the shelf because I'd rather take up less shelf space uh, than have a, a nice pretty picture. I, I may be alone here. You guys can correct me in the comments if I'm the only one, but that's my own personal feeling. So let's go to the spider, guys. So enter the Spider-Verse here. Again, just your classic with a little bit of a twist. You got Green Goblin, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Ghost Spider, and Spider-Ham. Now, they called her Ghost Spider. Uh, Spider-Gwen. It's often called elsewhere. I think in my Marvel Puzzle Quest game, it's actually Spider-Gwen. And this takes the Secret Identity Challenge. So that is the one that you can add to any game in this expansion. And you've got a few new tokens that you're going to be adding here. Like, almost look like cell phones. And again, for ease, let's just let's just leave them in the box and maybe do it that way from now on so I don't have to take them out individually and worry about the focusing. But you've got your locations here as well. Brooklyn, Bugle, Osborne, Oscorp, Queens, Midtown. There you go. And again, these are all silverbacks too. The Thanos one appears to be the only difference in terms of the coloration. Obviously, your green gobby. Focus is really giving me a lot of trouble tonight on this. There we go. Secret Identity Challenge card and Spider Ham. Spider Ham. Doing whatever a radioactive Spider Ham can. And then for the sake, we'll just we'll just do it this way then. Camera likes me more this way tonight. So Spider Ham. Again, I just don't know what it is. The detail just doesn't seem to be quite as good on these. On the blue. Maybe it's just the blue plastic. Although, that Spider-Man looks really nice, actually. Ghost Spider there? I don't know. Does it have a lot of detail? The base has a lot of detail. The model has next to none. That's kind of... It's kind of not great. You could have made her not as thin. I mean, this just looks kind of ratty. I don't like that one. That one's not as good. This, these are not nearly as good. I don't think any of these spider ones, these arms, only Spider-Mans are decent. The rest are all bleh. Goblin is by far and away the best in this one. So, that's that's sort of disappointing. The sculpt on Spider-Man is the only good sculpt there, too, besides Green Gobby. So that one's definitely, of the ones we've opened and looked at so far, definitely the least impressive. Well, if we're going to do Spider-Man heroes, we might as well do the villains. So, Return of the Sinister Six with your classic six villains there. I thought for a second I just almost had another panic attack because I wasn't sure if I had remembered to hit the pause button or unhit the pause button. So, I about lost it there for a half second. And this one actually, oh, this one's actually a little bit larger. So you've got six villains, and so defeating the Sinister Six is going to give you, well, I guess the back page is really just credits. So just a little bit more on the inside about the scenario itself. And as the box entails, although mine got a little folded apparently and bent, six. And, ooh, this is interesting. Now this is nice. This is what I would like to see in some of the upcoming X-Men stuff. Give me a difference. Instead of just these little individual things, like you can see, look at this. This is nice. And it goes all the way around and in and out in terms of who and what and where. So that is that is really nice. I really like that. That is impressive. And then you've got your villains here. Again, your six villain cards. Nothing, nothing new or different here in terms of, of who. So again, I mean, the one thing I'll say though is the artwork on all of this. I really like the artwork and the coloration. This is really well done. These little tabs in the plastic make it really easy to get out. And looks like we have a new type of card is sort of the threat card. So there you go. Weak spot. Ooh, that's this is this might be one of the better ones of all of them. If it adds that many more elements. And I guess the question would be how adaptable is it? Again, these are much better sculpts. These are much better detail. This is vulture. And look at those wings. There we go. 
There we go. Sandman uh, face is kind of weird. Mysterio, the base is cool, but the details in the rest of the body are a little lacking, just like with Sandman there. Then we got Craven, Doc Ock, and Electro. Sorry, guys, this is not focusing on these dudes. So I'm just going to do it the, the old-fashioned way here and just do it on the insert because this is just not focusing at all. There we go. And you can kind of make out a little bit of the detail on some of the face there. And that's kind of nice. Again, Electro, Doc Ock's okay. Doc Ock looks kind of weird as a chibi, I guess. And Craven looks okay. You can kind of make out some of the detail there on his face, the beard. It just seems, again, like there's more detail to these villains. And I'm not sure if that's my bias showing now that I've opened all of these like one by one or if it's actually the case. I don't know. But in terms yeah. of the setup on that one, that looks by far the best. Um, let's go. Let's go. Rise of the Black Panther next. And for some reason, I mean, you got Bucky Barnes. You know, Winter Soldier in this one. I don't know if they just ran out of people or, you know, you really couldn't get anyone else from the Black Panther universe. Or or did you just really want to throw Winter Soldier in somewhere? Again, one page. You get the Endangered Locations Challenge. They can be thrown in anywhere. A couple new sets of tokens. You got Killmonger as your bad guy in this one. Again, like... Why couldn't you come up with another Black Panther bad guy here? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. The assets on this in terms of art are, again, impressive. Got Bucky Barnes showing on the back. And there's the challenge card, as usual. These are a little bit, these are a little bit better. Bucky Barnes, it just appears very generic here. Shuri, pretty good. A lot of you can see a lot of more facial detail. So for whatever reason, these Black Panther ones actually look a lot better. And that Black Panther and that Killmonger there, those are both really impressive. I like those. Those are pretty awesome. If only I could do those justice when it comes to painting, right? But again, as you saw, a lot of empty space when it comes to the actual insert in terms of the cards, because you could take all of these cards outside of the boxes and consolidate and cut these miniatures in half and storage is just not efficient at all with these beautiful boxes with the artwork but everything else well we can discuss that later tales of asgard last one last one i know this has been going on too long thor odin son a little bit of everybody loki your favorite villain again the, the challenge here traitor challenge so i like that I, anytime you throw a traitor in a game like this, I just love that concept. So that's just me personally again, though. I really like the idea of Dead of Winter, even though, you know, anyway, that's a whole different subject. Loki. By the way. Loki. By the way, in case you were wondering, uh, the white cat, that is Loki. And uh, I didn't actually, I wasn't actually the one that chose that name. That was my wife. Right? Anyway. Heimdall, Odin's Vault, the Bifrost Bridge, Asgardian Palace, Throne Room, and Valhalla. Again, deck of cards, challenge card, nothing there to show. Boom, last set. And this again has the one villain for miniature, in case you were wondering. So you got your Beta Ray Bill there, then you have your Korg, your Valkyrie, and your Thor. So I was wrong about that earlier. If I mess that up, I apologize. But this detail, I mean, these, again, this detail and this sculpting is much better. This is probably, along with Black Panther, the best sculpts overall. And Loki there, Loki and Thor, that is just sweet. Those are much better standouts compared to a lot of the other heroes and villains in the core or the stretch goals. So overall, I'm pretty impressed by that. Two last small points after I punch the core box tonight. One, probably the easiest tokens I have ever punched out of a board game from a cardboard standpoint. I kid you not. Very easy. No hanging. No issues with the cutting. So I'm not sure if it was just the way they cut them or the exact cardboard thickness that they used. It was great. 
However, along those same lines, one thing I noticed in retrospect when I opened all these boxes is there are no baggies. Yes, some of those empty slots that I talked about can be used to store those tokens, but seriously, zero baggies in any of these. Thankfully, obviously, most of us have a small collection at this point of extra ones that we can use, but come on, man. Come on. So what do you think? That's everything. Well, not everything because I didn't get the play mat. That was a little too expensive, and I kind of regret not getting the cardboard locations. We'll see if I make that mistake with a second Kickstarter, and we'll just kind of go from there because you know I'm not going to stop at this when it comes to Marvel and Minis and Simon. so... I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know about any comments or questions down in the comment section. So, hey, hope you liked it. Hope you got a glimpse. Hope if you got this, uh, it's coming soon. I'm excited to get this to the table. And it just shot up my rankings of things to get to the table in terms of immediacy. So, hey, cool. As always, stay classy. See you around.